This time, we're going to talk about computer security. But before I start, I'd like to thank you for your numerous comments, suggestions, and opinions. Feel free to write them as long as they are decent and respectful. I'll make them into my future videos. Back to Raspberry Pi safety. Computer viruses have long been a great threat to computer users, and Raspberry Pi 5 has developed into a great a desktop computer. It is not very fast, but it's very useful. So it's only a matter of time when Raspberry Pi 5 or its successor might become uh, susceptible to viruses or when viruses will become a threat to it. Right now, most think that viruses are not a threat for Raspberry Pi 5 and they are basically right uh, because uh, there is also not much interest uh, among hackers to write viruses for Raspberry Pi 5. The other factor is that actually Raspberry Pi 5 has open source core operating system and it's much harder to inbuild any kind of mechanism that would allow a virus or other malicious software to embed to the operating system at the level that it can be embedded into a classic PC. But of course, there are programs with which you can update firmware on Raspberry Pi 5. And if these programs were plagued with malicious code, then uh, it would of course be possible to infect Raspberry Pi 5. But uh, luckily, firmware is not much of a problem because you can always reload firmware to a Raspberry Pi 5 and the procedure is well known and documented on the Raspberry Pi 5 web page. The other factor is data drive. We usually use SD card as a data drive and uh, this one of course can also be easily erased and reloaded with fresh version of operating system. What is actually a threat is that if imaginable attacker would try to act as the man in the middle for example, if you are using a Wi-Fi, your Wi-Fi network can be attacked by a hacker, which can actually discover your password and can lock his workstation to your Wi-Fi network. And of course, he can or she can infest your IP address table. And of course, this would cause all the traffic from your computer to the router to go also through a hacker's workstation. But of course, this probability is low and it is even lower if you are using Ethernet connections, wired Ethernet connections, then it's hard to, for someone to break in. But you can also use VPN, then it is even harder because even if you have permanent IP address at home, uh, then if, when you connect through a VPN of whatever provider you choose, then your internal address changes every time that you connect and it can also change periodically while you are connected. So it's very hard for an attacker to get into your computer even if it is connected to the internet 24 hours a day. But what is dangerous is that if you are browsing the internet you can come by malicious software or uh, a mail can also contain malicious software or if you are installing applications for unknown sources you can also run to an applications that might have been infested, but it's also a low probability. But there is another thing. A bookworm operating system gives a great emphasis on updates. It looks very similar to Windows updates. So if you want to be, you can be updated <laughs> almost every day. You can load uh, new parts of operating systems and applications that you've installed and you can update them. And of course, uh, there could have been a hacker that would hack uh, the update files and then you would install uh, also malicious code with updates. This is more or less theory, but it might have been possible. But it's more possible if you are a victim of man-in-the-middle attack. But forging certificates for software updates and so on, it's not uh, an easy task for a hacker. 
But if you think that you might have been a victim of a hacker's attack and that you have installed or others have installed malicious software on your computer, you have also another option. This is to use Calm AV software. It's an open source antivirus software. But of course, compared to other commercial products, maybe it lacks constant updates because you need a well-updated virus database if you want to detect viruses. But of course, uh, this software tool is more oriented toward uh, classic PCs. You can also install it on classic PCs and you can use it with Linux or Windows or even with Mac uh, computers. And th this might help, but okay, this, this is one way. Regarding vulnerabilities of Raspberry Pi 5 through to the main processor, I must say that there are quite a few and you can get a lot of documentation about this vulnerabilities. And it is important to stress that a hacker might use this vulnerabilities to gain access to your administrator's privileges through a common user account. So this means that any kind of application containing such a malicious code uh, would be able to gain full control of your computer and even upload malicious firmware. But in fact, there are also protective elements that are inbuilt into the core of the operating system that may block certain functionalities of ARM processors. And therefore, these exploits could be very difficult to use by hackers or even impossible to use. But of course, if you are looking just at processor designs that are originally offered by ARM to its customers, Raspberry Pi is also an ARM's customer then uh, you can see that processor design can be updated by the customer as much as uh, he wants. And uh, of course, he can also block certain features of the processor and he can make it safer. So it's hard to say exactly what kind of exploits could have been used by hackers up till now for Raspberry Pi 5, but I still think that Raspberry Pi 5 and all the Raspberry Pis are quite safe from hackers. And this is because hackers like them very much and they usually use them to hack other computers, especially classic PC, and to have computer networks with uh, Kali Linux and uh, similar operating system and hackers tool. And this means that actually if they want to do this, they must feel pretty safe because uh, if they were discovered, they would probably serve jail time, I think, that because they usually do so much damage that uh, it's hard to repair. And sometimes even computers have to be replaced to get rid of malicious software. Because it's worth to mention that if you are using a classic PC, uh, it also has firmware, but this firmware is usually not made public. You can update your firmware, but you can usually not get a whole firmware to reload. If you were able to reload the whole firmware, you would probably get rid of the malicious code that could enter UEFI BIOS. But on the other hand, many computer manufacturers fear for their knowledge. They upload their software to new motherboards, to new parts of PC, which can also be graphics cards. And then this kind of software is rarely updated. There is not even one version of update if it is not really needed. So if you somehow manage to get infected by a virus in this case, you don't have many options but to buy new hardware with <laughs> other uh, firmwares with, with original firmwares. So this is quite a big problem and that's why many classic PCs must be very well protected against a hacker attacks. Sometimes you can find uh, even backdoors. Software may have security holes that are relatively easy to exploit by hackers. Uh, if you don't use constant updates and antivirus software you might fall a victim to a random hacking attacks. 
but uh, with Raspberry Pi 5 you must be careful when you are installing new packages without source codes, without the ability for knowledgeable programmers to verify whether there are any vulnerabilities or even backdoor in such software. So actually your operating system and your computer is only as safe as its weakest link. I hope that this stays this way but at least my feeling is that with newer models of Raspberry Pi uh, there would be less and less open hardware architecture and drivers might not be open source and uh, also there is a small part of coding that is even today not an open source with uh, Raspberry Pi 5 but I don't think that this is really a problem because it is just intended for loading parts of operating system and uh, to load a bootloader so usually this would be very hard to be exploited by hackers but I'm not saying that it's impossible because some people are used to find ingenious ways to hack computers. It's very important what you do with your computer and what applications you install because it is sometimes possible with user privilege levels to gain administrator privilege level. This is always a recipe for a disaster because if any application that is run on your computer under user privilege levels manages to gain administrator privilege levels and uh, then installs some malicious software then uh, this is a full security breach and would certainly not be a good thing. I think that the safest operating system for the Raspberry Pi is Kali Linux because many hackers use it and they don't want to be discovered. Okay that's it for today. If you've liked my video press like and subscribe buttons and the next video is coming soon bye